Tablighi Jamaat, Part 7 Seven Signs of a Cult. In this seventh part, I would like to go over an article published by The Atlantic. It was published on June the 18th, 2014, and it was written in a Christian context. The Atlantic author gave seven signs of a cult. The first was opposing critical thinking. The second was isolating members and penalizing them for leaving. The third was emphasizing special doctrines outside scripture. The fourth was seeking inappropriate loyalty to their leaders. The fifth is dishonoring the family unit. The sixth is crossing biblical boundaries of behavior. The seventh is separation from the church. Now, like I have already mentioned, this is clearly a Christian context, but if we disregard number five, because it's not true to say that the TJs dishonor the family unit, though later on I will show and I'll prove how they disregard female members of their family. That's a fact and it's proven. Of these seven signs, the TJ clearly show six out of seven. If we change these terms, then mutatis mutandis, we will have a classic cult. The TJs believe that thinking should only be led by their elders and by what is stated in the Tablighi Nisab, stroke Faza'il A'amal. They do isolate members from their families and their communities and they take them for three days, 40 days excursions. They do emphasize doctrines outside of scripture because they have their own scripture. They do seek inappropriate loyalty to their leaders and this was mentioned by a number of researchers and it's clearly available in their cult-like behavior. Uh, like I've said, they do not dishonor the family unit, though they do cut off women from their day-to-day um, -day activities. Number six, they don't cross biblical boundaries, but they do cross social boundaries of behavior. They don't dress like uh, common Muslims. In fact, they dress more like Indian stroke Pakistani stroke Bangladeshi um, locals would dress. And separation from church, they have the most mosques in the whole of UK, 700 plus, but they would recommend a separation from a person's a regular mosque in order to attend their mosques. All these signs are present in the TJ. I would like to bring a number of other researchers in here. One of them is Dr. A. N. M. Ruhul Amin, who, who wrote his PhD thesis presented to the University of Aberdeen in March 1992. He states in his book, that the TJ are clearly non-political. He says, as a movement, TJ directs its attention to males alone. Although wives of followers are encouraged to hold their prayers and discussions in the seclusion of their own houses. The activities of the TJ are non-political in nature in conformity with the rules set down by its founder. It follows closely the asceticism prevalent within Sufi traditions of Naqshbandi Maslak. In fact, Molana Ilyas incorporated certain Sufi ideas and practices in his teachings, and these remain an essential part of the movement. So there we have the segregation with women and the Sufi nature of the group. Another researcher I mention is Dr. Ronald Geeves. He did his PhD at Leeds University in 1994. And these theses, this thesis, I'll give you the full title in a later edition. But he writes, 
on page 176 of his thesis. The founders of Dioband were also connected with the descendants of Shah Waliullah through their association with Shah Muhammad Ishaq. Then he continues that there are a number of famous founders of Dioband, amongst them Molana Muhammad Qasim Nanotawi and Molana Rashid Gangohi, Molana Muhammad Muzhar Nanotwi, Molana Muhammad Munir Nanotwi, and all of these fought against the British in 1857. I apologize for the pronunciation. These are difficult names to pronounce. This fact links the founders of Dioband back to the militant jihad movement of Sayyid Ahmed of Ray Reilly. After the defeat of 1857, this group of ulama eliminated any further thought of political activity from their program. So the TJs that you see today are an offshoot of this Diobandi movement and they are staunchly anti-political. Another cult sign is dissociation from society. And if we look at the research of Professor Peary, he says that his thesis has a tension within it. And this tension is based upon the fact that there is a split, there is a divided house between the TJs of the north in Dioband, who are basically show the classic signs of a cult, and the TJs in the south in London who are trying to engage with their neighbours, and yet they lack empirical credibility. The next thing that I mention is the fact that the TJs do not promote education, another sign of a cult. They cut off women, they segregate themselves from society, and they also are anti-education. There was research done by Dr. Mahmoud Chandia of the University of Central Lancashire, the UCLAN. It stated, Dr. Chandia's research stated, many students do not complete their examination in science, medicine, law, or journalism, and use the excuse that we must give priority instead to revivalist tours of 40 days, four months, or one year's duration, a central component of the activities of the TJ. That research was done in 2010 by Burt and Lewis. These are all clear signs of cult-like behavior. Peary analyzes this and says, in this sense, the dower work of TJ whilst promoting success in the hereafter, can also serve to contribute to the breakdown of society and stopping young people from achieving their potential in the here and now. This is clear cult-like behaviour. Stay tuned for the next part.